In this video, we discuss indeterminate forms and L'Hopital's rule. Um, indeterminate forms arise when we're computing limits. So if we have the limit of a quotient and the numerator approaches zero while the denominator approaches zero, as we approach a particular x value, then that's a zero over zero indeterminate form. Um, so let's say we're talking about f of x over uh, g of x. If they're both approaching zero as x approaches c, um, then the value of the limit will depend on sort of how fast they get to zero. If this function gets to zero faster than this function gets to zero, we'll have a zero divided by a number and our limit should be zero. And then if this function gets to zero before this function gets to zero, we'll have a number divided by zero, which will give us either plus or minus infinity. And then if they approach zero at the same rate, you know, we might get 17 or just like some finite number between zero and infinity or some finite number between uh, negative infinity and zero. Um, so um, it turns out that the limit as x approaches c of f of x divided by g of x um, is um, so, so indeterminate when we have this zero over zero because we don't know which one gets to zero faster. In that case, and in the similar case, when the numerator and denominator uh, approach either infinity or negative infinity, we have um, these two types of sort of quotient indeterminate forms where our f of x approaches zero and our g of x approaches zero as x approaches c, or f of x approaches plus or minus infinity and g of x approaches plus or minus infinity. We can use the same type of argument with the plus or minus infinity that we used with the zero divided by zero. Say, okay, if I've got something that's going to infinity and something else that's going to infinity, the question is which one gets to infinity faster? If this one gets to infinity faster, I end up with something very large divided by a finite number, so the result might be infinity. Or if this one gets to infinity faster, I end up with a number divided by something very large, so the quotient goes to zero. Um, or if they approach infinity at the same rate, you know, the limit might be three or negative five or some some con or some finite number that's not zero um, and is not uh, plus or minus infinity. Um, so we really can't tell whenever we have an infinity over infinity indeterminate form or a zero over zero indeterminate form what the limit is unless we do additional work. Now we've already seen some indeterminate forms like this whenever we evaluate um, limits at infinity to find horizontal asymptotes for a function. So for example, um, when we were trying to find the horizontal asymptotes for um, a rational function, if we had a rational function that looked like this, 2x minus three, all divided by x squared plus four x minus one, we said that's an infinity over infinity indeterminate form. Um, as x goes to infinity, and it's a negative infinity over infinity indeterminate form as x goes to positive infinity. That well, we can get rid of that problem. We can make the limit of the numerator and the limit of the denominator finite if we divide the numerator and denominator by the highest power of x in the denominator. So we'll divide the numerator and denominator by x squared. It doesn't change the value of the fraction. It just writes it, allows us to write it in a different way. So the limit as x goes to plus or minus infinity of 2x divided by x squared, which is 2 over x minus three over x squared. And then if we divide each of these terms by x squared, we get a one plus four divided by x minus one divided by x squared. Now as x goes to infinity or negative infinity, this is gonna go to zero, this is gonna go to zero, this is gonna go to zero, and this is gonna go to zero, because a finite number divided by a very large positive or negative number is going to approach zero as x gets larger and larger. So we end up with zero divided by one, which is equal to zero. So we would say that y equals zero is a horizontal asymptote of the function y equals 2x minus 1 or minus 3 divided by x squared plus 4x minus 1. Now that is something that we can do um, provided that we've got a polynomial in the numerator and a polynomial in the denominator. And if we had a radical expression or an expression involving a composite function with a radical on the outside and a um, polynomial on the inside, we can modify this approach um, so that we're dividing the numerator and denominator by the same thing. And doing that gets rid of the infinity over infinity or negative infinity over infinity indeterminate form. Um, but the question is, well, what if what if we can't do that? You know, what if I'm dealing with an exponential function and a polynomial function or a logarithmic function and a polynomial function or a logarithm and an exponential function and my quotient is approaching plus or minus infinity over infinity? Or, you know, what if we're dealing with trig functions and we're getting this type of limit? Um, you know, what if you know, this, this technique of dividing by x squared just doesn't apply? 
Well, then we can use what's called L'Hopital's rule. And L'Hopital's rule says that if F and G are differentiable on some open interval, um, and that open interval contains a point C, and G prime is not equal to zero on that open interval except possibly at C, then if the limit of F divided by G is, as X approaches C is a zero over zero indeterminate form or a negative infinity over infinity indeterminate form. So it has to be one of these quotient forms. So this is necessary for us to use L'Hopital's rule. We have to have one of these guys. Then the limit as X approaches C of F of X over G of X is a limit as X approaches C is equal to the limit as X approaches C of F prime of X over G prime of X. So he said, well, you know, if this one gets to zero faster, we have, you know, uh, a zero. If this one gets to zero faster, we get in plus or minus infinity. If they both approach zero at the same rate. Um, we have a finite number, a finite number that's non-zero. And we say, well, how do we measure those rates? Well, the derivatives, of course. This is the change in y with respect to x. This is the instantaneous rate of change of f with respect to x. And this is the instantaneous rate of change of g with respect to x. So it makes sense that we would use derivatives here. Um, so these limits are, are equal to each other. Again, you have to be um, in one of these cases where you have the, those quotient type indeterminate forms. And there are a couple of things that I would add to this. Um, this also applies to one-sided limit. So if we're taking the limit as x approaches c from the right or the left, um, this still holds as long as we have a zero over zero indeterminate form or a, or a plus or minus infinity over infinity indeterminate form. And of course, um, C does not have to be finite. So we can use this rule even if X is approaching plus or minus infinity. Um, so let's look at a couple of these. Um, this, this lecture typically involves evaluating indeterminate forms of these types, and then we have a product type, and then we have an exponential type, and then we have a difference. I'll probably do this type in another video, and then the exponential types in a, a third video, and then the difference type in a fourth video rather than doing all of the um, examples at once. So let's just start with the basic L'Hopital's rule. Now, remember, you don't always want to apply L'Hopital's rule. You have to be dealing with a zero over zero indeterminate form or an infinity over infinity, plus or minus infinity over infinity indeterminate form in the first place. Otherwise, L'Hopital's rule does not apply. So you have to make sure it applies. And actually, let's use this example. We have the limit as x goes to infinity of 2x minus 3, whoops, divided by x squared plus 4x minus 1. Now, that is an infinity over infinity indeterminate form, because the numerator and denominator both approach infinity as x goes to infinity. Um, so, by L'Hopital's rule, put a little h over the equal sign that limit is equal to this limit. The limit as x approaches infinity of the derivative of the numerator divided by the derivative of the denominator. And if we compute those derivatives, we have the limit as x goes to infinity of two divided by two x plus four. And as x goes to infinity, the numerator gets, or the denominator gets very large. So we have two divided by a very large number, which is a very small number. So we get zero. And since the limit as x goes to infinity of this original function is zero, y equals zero is a horizontal asymptote of the function. So this is another way that we can compute that limit at infinity. Uh, I prefer this way because I think it makes it sort of clearer why we get this answer. But, um, but L'Hopital's rule does apply here. So we could always apply L'Hopital's rule. Provided that you have an infinity over infinity indeterminate form in the first, first place, you can get that answer. And if the limit of a rational function is a finite value, as x goes to positive or negative infinity, well then, well actually, it doesn't have to be a rational function. If the limit of a function as x goes to positive or negative infinity is a finite value, then that finite value is sort of the right-hand side of the equation of the horizontal asymptote of that function. And it, you might have two horizontal asymptotes uh, if you get different limits from the left and the right. It doesn't happen with rational functions, but it might happen with other types of functions. Let's look at another one. So we have the limit, this is example two, as x approaches zero 
of the square root of 25 minus x squared minus 5, all divided by x. Now the question is, is this function continuous? Can I plug in x equals 0 and get a number out? Well, I know I can't plug in 0 uh, directly because then I'd be dividing by 0. So the denominator approaches 0. As I approach x equals 0 in the numerator, this function also approaches 0. I end up with the square root of 25, which is 5, minus 5, which is 0. So this is a 0 over 0 indeterminate form. And therefore, L'Hopital's rule is appropriate. So we'll say this is equal to this limit by L'Hopital's rule. And we'll have a derivative in the numerator, the limit as x approaches 0 of the derivative of the numerator. divided by the derivative of the denominator. And the derivative of the numerator requires the chain rule. You've got this function inside another function, that function to the 1 half power. So when we compute the derivative, we'll have the derivative of a function to the 1 half is 1 half of that function to the negative 1 half by the power rule. Put that function back inside and then multiply by the derivative of the inside. Derivative of 25 is 0. Derivative of negative x squared is negative 2x. Then we subtract the derivative of 5, which is 0. And we divide all of that by 1. And the 1 half and the 2 reduce. So we end up with a negative x in the numerator. And then if I want to, in the denominator, I can um, place this 25 minus x squared uh, to that negative 1 half, I can rewrite that as a 1 divided by 25 minus x squared to the positive 1 half. So I've got 1 divided by 25 minus x squared to the positive 1 half times negative 1x divided by 1 um, eventually leads to this. If you do the algebra, write that as a fraction, write this as a fraction, multiply straight across, and you'll get this. And the question is, OK, now if I substitute x equals 0, do I still have an indeterminate form? And I don't think so. Um, the numerator approaches 0, and the denominator approaches uh, 25 to the 1 half, or the square root of 25, which is 5. So we can just substitute x equals 0 here. This function is actually continuous at 0. But the opposite of 0 times, or divided by the square root of 25, which is 0. So that limit is finite, and it's 0. So what does that mean? That just means as x approaches 0, if we looked at the graph of this function, the y values on the graph approach 0. And since we had a 0 over 0 indeterminate form and the limit is a finite number, that means that function has a removable discontinuity. At x equals 0. So we might say that function is technically uh, discontinuous at x equals 0. But we could redefine it. We could say, let's let x of 0 equal 0, and then we would be filling in that little hole in the graph. And then the resulting function actually would be continuous at x equals 0. So I don't really know what the graph looks like. But I know that at the origin, we should have an open circle. And here's y, and here's x. When x equals 1, what do we get? A square root of 24 minus 5, so some negative number uh, divided by 1. Tiny negative number divided by 1. So some value over here. And then when x equals negative 1, we've got a negative number divided by negative 1, so it's going to be the same number but positive. I don't actually know what the graph looks like, but locally, it's going to look something like that, I guess. Probably a curvature might be wrong. I have no idea. But I know that um, it's a positive value on this side, and it's a negative value on that side, and the function values approach that point, 0, 0. OK. Um, and we were able to evaluate that limit um, using L'Hopital's rule, because we had a 0 over 0 indeterminate form. OK. Let's do one more. Let's take the limit as x approaches 1 of 3 natural log of x divided by x squared minus 1. Now, as x approaches 1, 
the numerator approaches three natural log of one. Now, if you remember what natural log looks like, you'll recognize that as zero. Y equals natural log of X kind of looks like this. Natural log of one is zero because e to the zero power is one. Um, so that is a zero in the numerator. And when I let X equal one in the denominator, I also get a zero. So we have a zero over zero in determinate form. So again, we'll use L'Hopital's rule. Put a little h over the equal sign to say the limit of this expression is the limit of the quotient of the derivatives. And you don't have to show this step with the differentiation operator. I just like to show that step because it reminds me that I'm applying L'Hopital's rule. Uh, the derivative of 3 times the natural log of x is 3 times 1 over x, or 3 divided by x. And then the derivative of x squared minus 1 is 2x. We've got two fractions there. 2x divided by 1 is implied. Dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. And just rewriting the expressions makes it make it easier to evaluate the limit. And then I say to myself, okay, don't, do I set, differentiate again, the numerator and denominator? No, first you plug in x equals one and see if the function is continuous there. Is this function continuous at x equals one? It's, it sure is. If I substitute x equals one to this function, I get three divided by two. Uh, so um, these both approach zero, but they approach zero at approximately the same rate in the vicinity of one. Uh, and so we end up with this three divided by two as our limit. Uh, so this function, I don't actually know what it looks like. Uh, it's undefined at x equals 1, but at x equals 1, it has a finite limit of uh, y equals 1 and a half. So I don't know what the graph looks like, but I know that at x equals 1, the y value approaches 1 and a half. So we've got this open circle at 1 and uh, 1.5. And then the function value might be greater than that or less than that on the left and right. I'm really not sure. Um, if our x value is slightly greater than one, this denominator is going to be positive. And if our x value is slightly greater than one, the natural log of x is going to be positive. So we'll have a positive or a positive. So I think the, the value should be, um, well, actually that's not, that doesn't help us at all. We just know that the result is positive and all the results are positive here. All the y values nearby are positive. So that doesn't really help. Um, I actually don't know what the graph looks like, but it's gonna do something, you know, it's gonna pass through that point somehow. If we wanted to find the sort of behavior of the y values locally near x equals one, we could just make a, a chart. We could look at this function numerically and let x approach one from the left and the right and see what the y values are. And then we might have a better idea of what the picture looks like. But I know that since the limit as x approaches one of this function is equal to this, and the original function is undefined at one, we have that removable discontinuity at x equals one. All right, so we did zero over zero in determinate form here. And we had a zero over zero indeterminate form there. And then our first example involves that um, rational function as x went to positive or negative infinity. And so let's look at one where we have an infinity over infinity indeterminate form uh, where we can't use that technique that we used when we were computing horizontal asymptotes. So let's take the limit as x approaches infinity of x cubed divided by natural log of x to the fourth. Now, as x goes to infinity, the numerator goes to infinity and the denominator goes to infinity. So this is an infinity over infinity in determinate form. Now we can also use log properties to simplify this. This uh, natural log of x to the fourth is equal to four times the natural log of x when x is positive, because um, that's just one of our log properties. The log of a to the n is n times log of a. We can bring that exponent out front. Um, one thing that I will point out though, 
is that this function is well defined for all x values except for x equals zero. We can't take the natural log of zero, but we can take the natural log of any positive number. And if, if x is positive or negative, we can um, raise it to the fourth power, get a positive number, and then take the log of that. Now, this function is only well defined when x is positive. So these are technically only equal when x is positive. If I want to make them truly equal so that they have the same domain, I would put the absolute value bars there. That way I can substitute x the negative values of x or the positive values of x. And if I take the absolute value of x and raise it to the fourth, I get the same thing that I get when I um, uh, take x and raise it to the fourth. Um, so, so these two are equal. I'm just rewriting that. We don't have to rewrite that, but I wanted to. And now we still have an infinity over infinity in determinate form. So by L'Hopital's rule, the limit as x goes to infinity of this is equal to the limit of the derivative of the numerator, which is 3x squared, divided by the derivative of the denominator. When we have an x here, uh, when uh, remember the absolute value of x is x when x is greater than or equal to 0 and negative x when x is negative, you have that v shape, right? We have a negative times a negative to get a positive when x is negative. That's why so we always get a non-negative answer uh, for the absolute value of x. So when I take the um, derivative of log of the absolute value of x, the log of x is, of course, has a derivative of 1 over x. Now, the log of negative x, that's on this branch, has a derivative of 1 divided by negative x times negative 1. So we still end up with a negative 1 divided by negative x, which is 1 over x. So the derivative of natural log of the absolute value of x is 1 over x. But I wanted you to uh, remember uh, that um, I'm actually having to think through the derivative rule twice. And on the interval from negative infinity to 0, I actually have to use the chain rule. On the inter interval from 0 to infinity, I just use my basic rule. So according to L'Hopital's rule, the limit of this is equal to the limit of this. And I've got a quotient in the denominator, so I can do a little bit of algebra to rewrite that. I'm dividing by 4 divided by x, so that's the same as multiplying by x divided by 4. Write that over 1 and multiply straight across. So you end up with 3x cubed divided by 4. And as x goes to infinity, of course, x cubed goes to infinity. You multiply by three fourths and it still goes to infinity. Um, so these functions approach infinity. This function approaches infinity and this function approaches infinity. Um, the x cubed function, if I look at it, looks kind of like this. And uh, that natural log of x to the fourth looks like natural log of x, but then x can be positive or negative, and then we're multiplying it by four, so it's going to be four times as tall. So it's growing four times as fast than we would expect. Um, but as x goes to infinity, we're thinking about the behavior of each of these functions as x goes farther and farther to the right. I want this number divided by this number, and I'm thinking, okay, well, how does that quotient change as x goes to infinity? Like, is it, does that quotient approach a finite y value? And it turns out it doesn't. This goes to infinity, and this goes to infinity. Um, but this numerator goes to infinity faster than the denominator does. And I think we know that. Natural log doesn't grow very fast at all. Um, the natural log's derivative is 1 over x. So the rate of change when x equals 100 is 1 over 100. If I multiply that by 4, the rate of change is just 1 divided by 25. It's very, very small. Um, at the same time, uh, when x is equal to 100, the derivative of this function is 3 times 100 squared. So we've got like 1 over 25 is the rate of change of this function. And then 3 times 100 squared is the rate of change of that function. Of course, that is growing much, much faster. It's a much, much larger number um, than that is. And as x gets larger and larger, that difference becomes more and more exaggerated. So um, this is going to infinity. Um, and then this is not going to infinity. It's going to 0. Uh, but that because of that, this quotient actually is going to infinity. And so. Um, this function grows faster than this function, and the results of this uh, limit, where we originally had an infinity over infinity in determinant form, is that um, the, the limit of that quotient is infinity. So I don't actually know what the graph looks like, but I know that as we go off to the far right, it looks something like that.
As x goes to infinity, y goes to infinity on the right. Now here's another one. Let's look at the limit as x goes to negative or positive infinity of e to the 2x divided by x. Let's do the square root of x. Well, if I use the square root of x, um, square root of x goes to infinity. It doesn't go to infinity very fast, but it goes to infinity. It looks like this. And e to the 2x goes to infinity, and it, it's going very, very fast. Exponential functions grow very fast. Um, so we've got an infinity over infinity in determinate form. You might say, which function is growing faster? I'm pretty sure that exponential is. So if this one's going to infinity faster than this, I'm expecting the limit to be infinity. Um, so uh, let's prove it. Since we have an infinity over infinity in determinate form, the limit of that quotient is the limit of the quotient of the derivatives of those functions. So we take the derivative of the numerator, the derivative of e to some power is e to that power times the derivative of the inside by the chain rule, which gives us a two. And that uh, square root of x is actually an x to the one half. So the derivative of x to the one half, sorry, is one half of x to the negative one half. And we can rewrite that. This is one divided by two times one divided by the square root of x. And then I'm dividing by this fraction. I'm dividing by a fraction is multiplying by the reciprocal. So we have the limit as x approaches infinity of two times e to the two x times two times the square root of x. And so the question is, well, I've got the limit now as x goes to infinity of four times the square root of x times e to the two x. Is that indeterminate? Well, as x goes to infinity, I've got something that's going to infinity times something else that's going to infinity. A large number times a large number is still a large number. Uh, so that uh, value or the limit is infinity. So again, we're going to have that behavior where as x goes to infinity, the y's go to infinity. And we're talking about the y values on this particular function. Now, if we had done it the other way around with the square root of x in the numerator rather than in the denominator, exponential functions grow faster than that square root function. So I'm expecting a finite number divided by something that's approaching um, infinity. So I would expect the limit in this case to be zero. It's still an infinity over infinity in determinate form. So the limit as x approaches infinity of this is equal to the le limit as x approaches infinity of the derivative of the numerator divided by the derivative of the denominator. And then that numerator can be written as 1 half times 1 divided by the square root of x. And we're dividing all of that by 2 times e to the 2x, all divided by 1. Dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, and we can multiply straight across in the numerator. So that's our numerator, and then we multiply by the reciprocal of that. And so we end up with 1 divided by 4 times the square root of x times e to the 2x. You might say, I recognize that. Well, that's what we were taking the limit of in the last problem. A big sense, because um, basically we just flipped it. So now the uh, function that we ended up with um, and the last problem that was in the numerator is now in the denominator. As x goes to infinity, that denominator goes to infinity. One over a very large number is a very small number. So the limit is zero. So this function has a horizontal asymptote. Of a zero. So this goes to zero as x uh, goes to infinity. All right. There's a nice one in the book that I really like. So I'm going to do this. I think it's the first example in the book. 
we've got e to the three x minus one divided by two x. I think I modified it a little bit. I changed the exponent and I changed the coefficient here and there. But again, this is one of those um, indeterminate forms that can't be evaluated using the techniques that we studied when we computed horizontal asymptotes in the earlier section. I can't just divide the numerator and denominator by x, because um, then I have this e to the three x over x. Um, well, actually, could we? e to the three x over x. Well, no, then we'd have a zero there. So we don't want to do that. We'd have a zero in the denominator there. Um, so let's let's look at what happens as x approaches zero. Uh, two x approaches zero as x approaches zero. So our denominator approaches zero. Um, as x approaches zero, the numerator is e to the zero, which is one. One minus one, which is zero. So we've got a zero over zero in determinate form. So it's appropriate to apply L'Hopital's rule. So we will. Take the derivative of the numerator. Derivative of an exponential is that exponential times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of 3x is 3. We subtract the derivative of uh, 1, which is 0, and we divide by the derivative of 2x, which is 2. And then we say, as x approaches 0, uh, is this function continuous? Can I just plug in 0 and get an answer out that makes sense? I, I sure can. Um, e to the 0 is 1, and I get uh, 3 halves. So as x approaches 0, um, the y values on this graph approach three halves. So graphically, we're just saying here's x equals one, or y equals one, y equals two. As x approaches zero, the graph approaches that um, one and a half value. And I actually don't know uh, what the values are like on the left and right of x equals zero. Um, I mean, I might, I don't really know how it approaches that point, uh, but the graph approaches that point from the left and the right. Um, because the limit as x approaches 0 of that function is equal to that value, and the original function is undefined there. Now, we could explore all of these functions numerically as well. Um, I think I will do that with at least one example so that we can get some sense of how um, sort of our numerical approximations of these functions um, suggest that the limit of this function should be 1 and a half. Um, I don't do that in every case, um, but we can do that. Now, when the limits are approaching, um, limits involve x approaching infinity, I usually plug in x equals 100, x equals 1,000, x equals 10,000, x, x equals you know 100,000, and see what the y values do. If that's that's what we would do, or that's those are the types of x entries that we would have in our table of values as x approaches positive infinity, if we want to see the behavior of that function. Um, but this is a nice uh, method for computing the uh, limit of an indeterminate form that is zero over zero or plus or minus infinity over infinity. And it allows us to use the derivative uh, in order to do that. We take the derivative of the numerator and the denominator. And again, the idea is if I have a zero over zero indeterminate form, I know this function is approaching zero and this function is approaching zero. And the question is, which one gets there faster? Does this function approach zero faster than this one? Then I have zero divided by a finite, uh, a non-zero finite number, so I get zero. Does this function approach zero faster? But then I have a, a non-zero finite number divided by zero, so I get plus or minus infinity. And then if they approach zero at the same rate, we might get a finite number. In this case, they do approach zero at approximately the same rate in the neighborhood of x equals zero. So we get this uh, three divided by two. Um, we get a finite number. Uh, so we end up with that removable discontinuity um, at x equals zero. And the limiting y value is uh, three halves or one and a half. So here's that last example. We looked at that e to the three x minus one divided by two x was a zero over zero indeterminate form. And we got a finite limit of three divided by two. Okay, well, um, yeah, if we look at a table of values um, in the vicinity of x equals zero, does the table of values suggest the same thing? And it does. So if I substitute a bunch of x values where the x's are approaching, um, actually, let's use a different color for that. Uh, the x values are approaching zero from the left over here, and then zero from the right on this side. And we see that the y values on this uh, in this table get closer and closer to 1.5. As we approach x equals zero from the left, the y values are 
is slightly less than 1.5. And as we approach x equals zero from the right, the y values are slightly more than 1.5. Um, so that is consistent. That's what we see when we graph it. Now, you see a whole bunch of points in, in here because uh, those x values are very, very small, very, very close to zero. And we have an open circle at 0 and 1.5 on the graph there. Now, we might want to look at the numerator and denominator. Um, L'Hopital's rule says that if the limit of the numerator is 0 and the limit of the denominator is 0, um, then we can apply L'Hopital's rule to compute that limit. Well, and if the numerator approaches 0 faster than the denominator, then we might expect the limit limiting value to be zero. Or if the denominator approaches zero faster than the numerator, we might expect the limiting value to be plus or minus infinity. And if it, they approach zero at approximately the same rate, um, then we might expect uh, the limit to be finite. And in this case, they do approach zero at approximately the same rate. Here is the function from the numerator. I would like to get rid of those points that I've sketched in. So we've got an exponential function, e to the 3x minus 1. And in the vicinity of 0, uh, the derivative is 3. So our rate of change is 3 there. And the other function is just 2x. In the vicinity of 0, the rate of change is 2. Those rate of changes are on the same order of magnitude, so I would expect the limiting value to be finite, and it turns out that it is. The limiting value is 3 divided by 2. Uh, it's just sort of a coincidence that when we plug in 0 to this function and this function, we happen to get the right value. Um, actually, no, it's not. Um, just kidding. We would find f prime of x in the numerator, f prime of x in the denominator, and then if possible, we would plug in 0 if that function is well-defined at zero. So since the function was well-defined at zero, when we substitute um, zero in the numerator and zero in the denominator, we get a three divided by two, which gives us the um, one and a half. Um, so yeah, uh, since the functions have approximately the same rate of change um, near x equals zero, we would expect the limiting value to be zero. Now I wanna show you an example where that doesn't happen. So here's one where we might be interested in the limit as x goes to positive infinity. It was one of those that we worked on paper. We had the limit of x cubed divided by natural log of x to the fourth as x goes to infinity. So h of x is um, f of x divided by g of x, where f of x is this function and natural log of uh, x to the fourth is our g of x, our denominator. Now, if we graph both of those and we think about what happens to both functions as x goes to infinity, well, obviously, as x goes to infinity, x cubed goes to infinity. And if we look at the graph of natural log of x to the 4, um, it just looks like 4 times the natural log of x and 4 times the natural log of negative x at the same time. If any x value that's non-zero will, will work, we just take the absolute value of x, natural log of the absolute value of x, and then multiply by 4. So we get this. Now, as x goes to infinity, this is this natural log function is going to infinity. It doesn't go to infinity very fast, but it goes to infinity. So we've got this function going to infinity, and then we have this function going to infinity. And then we've got this purple function divided by this green function. And we say, well, um, if this is, we, as x goes to infinity, we have an infinity over infinity in determinate form. Um, so which one goes to infinity faster? I think we can just look at the graph and tell that the rate of change of this purple function is much larger than the rate of change of the green function as x goes to infinity. Um, it's easy enough to compute that. If we look at f prime, well, that's just 3x squared. And then if we look at g prime, that's uh, actually this g is the same as 4 times the natural log of x. So the derivative is 4 divided by x squared or sorry, four divided by x, excuse me. So according to L'Hopital's rule, since we had an infinity over infinity in determinate form, a very large x value, or a very large y value divided by a very large y value, 
the um, limit of the quotient as x goes to infinity is the same as the limit of the quotient of 3x squared divided by 4 um, over x. Now, as x goes to infinity, this 3x squared goes to infinity, and this uh, 4 divided by x approaches 0, and it's going to be a tiny positive number. So if I take a very large positive number, like a million, and I divide it by a very small positive number, say 1 millionth, what I end up with is 1 million squared. So when I multiply by the reciprocal, um, the, the quotient just gets larger and larger. So the resulting um, limit is infinity. And I think that that makes sense, is we're taking a very large number and we're dividing by a very tiny positive number. Um, and so we get infinity. And then you say, okay, well, what does that have to do with rates of change? Well, the rate of change of this function as x goes to infinity is much, much larger than the rate of change of this function as x goes to infinity. Since this rate of change, um, since x cubed grows much faster than natural log of x to the fourth as x goes to infinity, we would expect the quotient um, to go to infinity because we'll have a very large number divided by something that's very small and we'll get, um, or a very large number divided by a finite number. And a very large number divided by a finite number is a large number. And if we're dividing by something that's very close to zero and it's tiny and positive, well then dividing by a tiny positive number just ends up multiplying by a large positive number when we um, take the reciprocal. Um, so we see that. Now, if you want to visualize this, we can graph h of x. And as x goes to infinity, uh, the y values go to infinity. It's a little bit difficult to see, but I think we can imagine. It looks like um, looks like I'm only seeing the graph up to like x to the negative six or x to the six. Sorry. So I will change the x values. Let's go from negative six, six. Let's let the y values. And let's see the corresponding y values. Um, in this uh, window, we can see that as x goes to infinity, the y values keep increasing. And if we zoom out, we can see the y values keep increasing. But they grow so fast um, that we're just sort of staying in this very um, narrow uh, sort of column around the y-axis. I think we'll stop there for our zero over zero indeterminate forms and infinity over infinity indeterminate forms plus or minus infinity over infinity. Um, in the next video, we will look at product type in, indeterminate forms where we have zero times plus or minus infinity. Say if, if the, the function that's approaching zero gets to zero first, we get zero. If the function that's approaching plus or minus infinity uh, approaches and in, in, it gets to infinity first, the, the product is positive or negative infinity. So, um, we just need to figure out what that is. And it turns out if we do a little algebra, we'll be able to apply L'Hopital's rule. So we'll do that in the next video. And if, if we have plenty of time, we'll probably go on to the exponential type indeterminate forms as well.